everyone and welcome to the first episode of series four of Cup and Natter, a Pro League special. We're making Cup and Natter history because we've got two guests for the price of one for only the second time in Cup and Natter series history. So Leah Wilkinson and Sarah Jones, thank you so, so much for joining me. Pleasure. Thanks for having us. Right, so I must admit, this has been delayed by 24 hours, this episode tonight. Um, because of the social media boycott that GB Hockey took part in over the weekend. But I'm sure it's going to be worth the wait. I'm very, very excited. I've got two of Wales and GB Hockey royalty in the house right now. Um, Leah as Wales most capped sport person of all time. Okay, so this is every single sport, both genders, remarkable achievement. And Jonesy, the first female Welsh, uh, Welsh player to represent GB since 2012. Okay, so we've got royalty in the house. We've got myself, I'm ready to go. Are you ready to go? So We're so ready. so ready. Okay, right, let's crack on. So I start every cup and natter by finding out how you like your tea. Now this is very important, of course, and the mug game is strong already. Would you like to, you know, just give us a update. What, what made you choose these mugs? Well, I mean, this was one of my favourite films. I would like to say growing up, but I was probably about 20 when it came out. But okay. I absolutely loved Jurassic Park and I thought it would make me look really cool. Uh, yes. Unfortunately, I don't drink tea or coffee or in fact any hot drinks. And as it's um, not that late in the day, I didn't think it was appropriate to have a Coke Zero in it either. So um, I've got a, a water. But <laughs> cheers. Okay, so there we have it. That's the first episode of Copper and Natta over before it even started. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave it now. Nah, unbelievable. I must admit, though, I've never um, seen Jurassic Park before, so we're both... It's like you've never seen Pretty Woman, which you told us... I feel like we Christmas. should out you to the nation that you had not seen Pretty Woman. Until this I think Christmas, which potential is criminal act. Yeah. It's like, come on, this is this is one of those things. It was a learning process. I really enjoy Pretty Woman now. One of my favourites, up there for me, top ten. Um, but yeah, okay, Jonesy, looking at your mug, strong. I'm a big fan um, of a thin mug. Yeah. Um, and a small mug, which and this ticks that box, and it's quite it's quite cute. It's got a little cat on the front. So and in it. So you like dogs? I do. Yeah. But no pressure to get a dog. Um, and in it is, um, of course, a Yorkshire tea. Interesting. But, I mean, I wouldn't expect anything less. A good tea drinker needs to have a good mug. Okay, so that sums you two up perfectly. Jurassic Park and Cat Lego. Okay, but, 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 but to start this, this cup and natter off, we're doing a Mrs. and Mrs. style. Okay, game. All right, so I've pre warned you, you need props for this. Now, I I've taken it upon myself. There we go for anyone. We've got wooden spoons. I said to the girls, they've never looked so good on a wooden spoon. Okay, so we're going to use these props for Mrs. and Mrs. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Ready. Have you got your items ready? We have. Oh, very good. Very good. Okay, okay. Okay, so first one, first question. This, this, we already know this. Who drinks the most amount of tea? Okay, Hamilton wins. Who is most likely to make the other a cup of tea? Hmm. Yeah, obvious, okay. It's actually very exceptional. I feel like it's a skill that she's learned over the last eight years. It's fantastic. Well, there's obviously a sign that the putting the ring on the finger was obviously a big tick box, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> question three. Who is most likely to get the biscuits out? Okay, I, <laughs> I'll probably get them out <laughs> and then Sarah would eat the whole packet. Eat the whole packet because yeah, yeah. she has no control. So I can easily like eat one, put the rest away, you know, eat one bit of chocolate, put it away. She's no. got to finish the packet. If it's open, it's got to be finished. Okay, well, that actually answers my second question, uh, my fourth question, sorry, who is most likely to finish the biscuit? So that is oh. Jonesy. Right. Yeah. Hamilton wins. Okay, fifth one. Who is most likely to wash the mugs afterwards? Hmm. Just. Just. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. Like it's a shared responsibility, but I... A shared responsibility that I wash your mugs. 
the tea drinker washes the tea drinking mugs. Makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> can we just can we just pause though? In terms of, I think it'd be a wasted opportunity for the misses and misses. Okay, I've got the wooden spoons, but obviously you've got what you've got there. Can you explain? Well, this was going back to like the Jurassic Park link. Mm. This was one of the albums I listened to most growing up. So a bit of an Alice Morissette, and I think she probably suits my personality <laughs> maybe a little bit you know kind of somber and you know likes to whine a little bit maybe at times uh, sure. but I do actually love Alanis Morissette and this album Jag Little Pill if you haven't listened to it um have you listened to it no I, that's why I asked because I didn't have a clue what you're holding up <laughs> have you heard of Alanis Morissette absolutely not no, you were. Um, it's not Little Mix. I don't listen to it. <laughs> that, that's true. We've got Little Mix. Um, so yeah, that's that's why. And you can listen to it. Um, isn't it ironic that she's never listened to the album? It's not before? ironic at all. It's just bad form. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. That's one of the songs. <laughs> okay, the songs. So this is going to be cut for the second time of Cupper and Natter episode one of series four. We're, we're falling out after what? Five, ten minutes? Perfect start, guys. Okay, Joan, over to you. Now I've heard of this and I've seen it. Oops, you have? I've seen it. Hamilton, um, I'm a big fan of musicals. I think they're just, who doesn't love to sing along to a good musical? And um, Hamilton is, I would say, my favourite musical. If you haven't seen it, do. I d I'm not an advertiser. You're not, <laughs> not on commission. For it, but I don't you know. think it's brilliant. It's also on Disney. Um, yeah, it's just a it's just a good feel good powerful musical. Love it. It's got everything in it and a bit of rapping. So you are selling it, but just in case people haven't like heard um, either of these kind of kind of records, would you be interested to give us like a little snippet either of you, or is that too far? I mean, honestly, the idea of me singing is possibly uh, like torture oh. you wouldn't get it anyway um but Sarah can I don't Sarah think Lisa. I don't think that's a good idea <laughs> I think that is an awful idea maybe next time then maybe next time if we invite you back for another couple for another uncut mm. like right. an uncut thing yeah right. we can look into it and look no further little mix Nicki Minaj I'm here for it as well so two can play that game all right okay <laughs> Well, we'll part that. We've realised we've already learned a lot about both of you, okay? But let's crack on with actually the real reason why you're here, okay? So I've pre-warned you that I ask all my Cupper and Natter guests three questions, okay? So to start things off, um, looking back over your international careers together, okay? You have played in the same team for both club and country for many years right now, including you know, two Commonwealth Games, including an Olympic um, qualification event for uh, GB. And probably you've experienced so many highs and lows together. But, you know, a question for anyone, how easy is it or challenging to play in the same team as your partner? I think you've summed it up with saying that about the highs and lows. I think, obviously, as you know, like going through any international career is really like a roller coaster ride. Um, and I think then when you go through it with your other half, it's almost like the highs are even higher because you get to have all those wonderful moments, like you said about going to a Commonwealth Games together. Um, but you also experience the lows together, like Leah getting hit every other game and it's like, <laughs> and again. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's definitely, it's definitely a roller coaster. No, I, I do totally agree. And I think um, things got even more, not challenging, but more intense with when I joined the, the GB programme in, in what, 20, 2019. 2019, because that then became became your full time, well, is your full time job. Whereas with Wales and, and with Holcomb or Reading before that, um, obviously you play together, but then you would go and do your normal job during the day and then you would, you know, escape from the other person and it wouldn't seem quite so intense and I think with GB that was that was more of a test because our work was the same our club was the same everything was kind of the same and I think especially with Covid that became really difficult because then we weren't able to see family friends um, and kind of 
it, it just <laughs> it just got quite quite intense. And I think then as well with things getting closer to the Olympics and the pressure that that naturally brings with with uh, selections and things like that, that's that has been challenging and it, it definitely has um, yeah been difficult at times, hasn't it? I think. Yeah. I was going to ask you actually because um, you know as you touched upon um, now working you've got the same working environment as, as each other and you're both in the GB centralised programme and obviously as part of our training there's a lot of competition okay so whether it be like match play whether it be sports sided games everything okay and considering both of you either play in the middle of the park or more defensive and attacking so Leah is a defensive player uh, Jonesy is attacking it's not you know a, a surprise when you are up against each other so how is that, okay, when you're in training and you're going up against each other, and you might not be on the same team every day, obviously, but how easy is it to leave that at the gate and then maybe on your drive home not, you know, continue? <laughs> like, how does it's that a, work? That's a put, very I good put question. Her, I put her in a boot on yeah. the way home. Oh, do you? On the roof racks. It's a very good question because I think, over the time that we've played together, and like you say, now that's been a very long time, we've learned to be a bit better at um, the journey home. Mm. Um, and there's been a lot of fractious journeys home. Um, and and like you say, I think, you know, we're both quite red characters, um, both super competitive. Um, and certainly, you know, I can just remember some club nights that we there was absolutely no conversation in the journey home because someone's tackled someone or fouled someone or, <laughs> you know had a little nip at someone after something's happened um and I think we've learned in that time like you said to to leave it at the gate um and I hope you know and it's important being on the same team that um that other people don't feel that that friction if it is there so um yeah so I hope that we've got a little bit better at that but you're probably better at telling us <laughs> whether we're better that. It. I think it's amazing I mean I don't think I mean I speak personally here and I think it's my bad here but like I don't think I give you two credit enough for like the situation you're actually in because I just see you as like two of my teammates, two of my friends just cracking on. And actually, I think that's credit um, to you guys for doing that because um, I can't imagine it can be challenging. But you touched upon it, Leah, about um, during lockdown and, and, you know, looking back, obviously, it was such a tricky time for us all and being able to train throughout that period and keep our motivation high. Was it easier or harder having each other in the same position throughout those months of lockdown? I think it was definitely easier yeah. Yeah. Um, because we were able to train together as well, which was really good. You know, you know more than anyone what it's like to go out when it's, um, you know, sometimes when motivation's a bit difficult and with lockdown, we didn't know what was going to happen originally with the Olympics and things like that. It is it was difficult to keep motivation and I think we kind of can spur each other on and then when we're out there in the say in the park running or whatever it's obviously make kind of gets the most out of each other yeah. when we're racing each other running together um and it also meant we could do ridiculous hockey challenges in the hall mm -hmm. and we could have a bit of a knock around together and things like that so until an argument ensued obviously <laughs> <laughs> um yeah normally because Sarah chipped the in the hall or damaged the paint or something but um no it did make it it did make it better I think lockdown number two and lockdown number three were more challenging one because lockdown one was in glorious weather and everyone actually I think at lockdown one a lot of people actually thought this isn't that bad have a bit of escape from family for a while you know um but the lot they did get harder I think because uh, the weather the weather turned and it just became really difficult and that you know lockdowns were really hard to not see family and friends and uh, but overall I think it was better to, to be together for sure it, it's interesting because yeah both of you like have you know the companion both off the pitch but also on the pitch and away from Bisham at Bisham I mean it's it's you know it's a pretty special situation to be in and I guess that kind of moves me nicely on to the second question, looking back at one of the, you know, many highs that you've experienced together. Now, this is obviously playing for Wales and GB. Um, Leah, yourself, you made your Wales debut back in 2004, is that correct? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I was in year five then, but that's absolutely fine. <laughs> and, <laughs> sorry, no, no, no. And then you made your GB debut in 2019, okay? And Jonesy, you made your um, Wales debut in 2005, only a year later, is that correct? No, that can't be right. Well, I wasn't 15, no, surely not. I think you may be age groups. Oh, maybe age groups, yeah. Um, I'm senior GB hockey. Okay, <laughs> that was a little bit off with that one, but that's fine. Are we roll with it. 2018 for your GB uh, debut, that's, that's what matters. So I'm actually going to ask about your GB debuts, looking back at it for, you, for yourself separately, so maybe Jonesy first, Leah second. How, did, how special occasion was that for you both? It, it was just, it was incredible. It was something that I think Leah will probably say the same. You get to a point in your hockey career that you think, that it will never happen. Um, but regardless of that, it was something that, you know, I was working towards for what felt like an awfully long time, probably in comparison to Leah, you know, not very long at all. Um, but um, it just, yeah, and it's so difficult at the time because you're so caught up in the game and people even say to you before, you know, teammates, you probably said to me, you know, embrace that moment because you'll never get your first cap again. Um, and at the time you're so caught up in it that you don't really get a chance to just like take it all in. Um, but even when I reflect on it now, it was in Changzhou in, in China. Um, certainly a, a different place to get your first cap. Um, it was alongside, there were first caps of um, Amy Tennant, Tess Howard um, and Erica Sanders. And obviously they're pretty, pretty good people to get a first cap with. Um, and yeah, just hugely memorable, honestly, I can't even remember if we won or lost, but I remember the first touch of the ball, I completely mistrapped it and it just shot off the sideline. And I was like, that's a great, that's my international GB debut. Um, and I just remember feeling hugely supported by my teammates um, and just very proud singing, singing the national anthem uh, for the first time. I can imagine. And what about yourself, Leah? Um, yeah, I think like Sarah said, it was something that I definitely had kind of put to, to bed the idea of playing for GB, I mean, it was what well, I'd had my first Wales cap 15 years before. Um, and I'd been to a GB trial a number of times and had every injury under the sun. You know, we could talk for half an hour about how ridiculous we get even the experiences of being at GB trials were from our first trial. I think it was in 2013. Um, but it was, yeah, it was mad, really. It was it was really surreal. We were at... Um, uh, Bisham Abbey uh, playing against India but to be honest it, it didn't matter where it was the the experience and the opportunity to play for GB was was amazing and you know I remember my family being on the sideline and yeah it's just a really really special moment and yeah it was definitely one I I won't forget and I like I said before I'll never ever take it for granted playing for GB because I feel exceptionally lucky and honoured and you know there's only a few of us that ever get the opportunity to play for Great Britain and yeah it's it's insane and it's just a, a really special special thing to be able to do. I think looking back at you know what you guys have achieved obviously before your GB debuts is remarkable in itself but also the impact that you've had you know on our squad on GB hockey but on Wales since making your GB debut should be recognised in my opinion and Currently, you are the only two Welsh players in our GB uh, squad. Rose Thomas also was in um, the GB squad early on in the cycle. So that's three representatives from Wales in this Olympic cycle. For yourselves, speaking personally and obviously looking, looking further, further on into the future, what do you think needs to happen to try and you know, increase that number um, to more representatives in the, in the GB sides? I think it's, um, I think it needs to be a complete um, like multitude of things. I think top down things, if you like, like GB um, Welsh players representing Wales is hugely important because I think that inspires people. I think it just shows people that it's actually possible. Um, and then obviously kind of like bottom up, you know, participation things, um, just, you know, growing the game in Wales and ensuring that um, it's played across um, you know, schools, clubs, um, and, and making that a really positive experience to then encourage as many people playing hockey, which will then give people 
you know more more ch more people more chances um, to play higher up. I think it needs to be across the board and everything in between. You know, obviously Swansea getting promoted to the Premier League and and Penarth women um, going up a division makes a huge difference um, to, to hockey in Wales. Um, and it makes me incredibly proud that there's been three Welsh women, like you say, in this Olympic cycle, um, and also three um, three men as well. It's you know in the last cycle there were no there were no Welsh people whatsoever and. Um, and it's the same for the Scots as well. I just think it's so important to have um, a true home nation representation. Um, and I really hope that um, myself and Leah and, and also Rose have inspired people and just shown people that it's possible to, to, to be from Wales and to represent Great Britain because there's, there's, no, there's no bigger honour. Yeah, I feel like that's a mic drop moment right there. I've got a little bit of goosebumps hearing you. But like, like Leah, is, like speaking for yourself and as I touched upon as Wales most capped sports person of all time across all sports like there's no better role model in sport in my opinion right now than yourself you've experienced it all but do you see that as kind of um you know a weight on your shoulders a little bit to you know inspire that next generation to want to pick up a hockey stick um like thank you for a start um I think that, like Sarah said, it is just really important that we do as much as we can to try to promote hockey within Wales. And it, it's a difficult one because we don't live in Wales. Yeah. And I think that's quite difficult because we obviously are, are very busy with, with GB and then obviously uh, before that with our jobs and we're based in England. It means that we probably can't yeah we can't do as much as we would want to and I think that's the biggest kind of challenge but also frustration for us you know it's not like an evening we can just drop into to a, a Welsh club or that we can go and speak at a school and things like that and and that's the most um, challenging thing I mean I sit within um, like the Athletes Commission within Team Wales so I try to do things kind of that way um, to kind of help promote hockey and all sport within within Wales but I think that's our our biggest challenge is we would like to do more but we're not as round around as much as we could be and I think once we we stop GB and potentially take a step back from playing competitive hockey we hopefully will be able to do a little bit a bit more to to help them because that that's the that's the dream really to to give back because that's really important for both of us. Mm. I mean Obviously, I can speak um, as a teammate, but also as a friend here. But I think, you know, I don't think you guys do give yourself enough credit for what you do in inspiring people back home in Wales. I mean, it must be challenging, obviously, not being back home because you might not be able to have that hands-on approach as much as you'd like. But, yeah, I think I, I, I can speak personally when saying, you know, having you guys involved, having Rose Thomas involved throughout this Olympic cycle, it makes our sport, our, our squad, um, you know, even better, even more powerful. It has a bigger reach. I think it's really important. So I wholeheartedly agree with everything that you do. I think you guys need to give yourself a little bit more credit for the role models that you are and inspire, inspiring all those, you know, people in Wales to pick up a hockey stick and, you know, dream big. But um, yeah, really interesting to hear you talk about it. Um, I'm a little bit wary of time because, you know, us three do like to talk, but I've got <laughs> one final thing to ask of you, if that's all right. Um, now, this round, I haven't told you about it, but you just got to roll with it. It's called Teammates, okay? It's inspired by Soccer AM, one of my favourite TV programmes, and this will probably either put you in your the good books or the bad books of some of your GB hockey teammates, okay? I will be cutting this episode if you stitch me up, so cut me out of it. But, um, yeah, I'm going to give you a few sentences. You're going to choose um, who it best describes. You can work separately or you can work together, whatever you would like to do, okay? But do you understand where we're going with it? We yeah. do, yeah. This is exciting. <laughs> this is entertaining. All right, question number one. Who's the loudest? Lily. Lily. Oh. oh. Okay. Yeah. It's all right, you can go with yeah, your original no, answer, thinking. it's okay. Okay, I'm going to stick with my answer, but yeah, that's a good one. Okay, so just to reiterate, Leah, you're going for? Lily. Joan. I'm Tennant. Interesting. Two good good contenders, I must admit. Okay, fastest. 
Ellie Raya. Oh. Yeah. Also. Joe. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So this is Anna with a turn. Anna with a turn. Anna with a turn. She's rapid. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A few speed maestros in the team. Okay. Tough nut. Oh. Do you know what? I'm going to go Lizzie Neal. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. I'm going to go Tess. She oh, can. Yeah. She can take it. She gives it out as well. So Tess. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. I'm just going to stick with Lizzie though. You know what? I think you're doing yourself a disservice, Leah. I thought that had you written all over it. You get some. <laughs> oh, yeah, <true. laughs> I, I think maybe I'm just a bit silly. No. Nah. <laughs> hard as nails, girl. Hard as nails. Okay, number four. Funniest. Oh, Saz. Yeah, Robbo. Yeah. yeah, she's yeah. the queen of the one liners. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next one. Yeah, it should be yours, <laughs> but it's not. Yeah, it's not. Well, I can appreciate it. <laughs> Longest in the shower. Sarah. You. Joe also takes forever in the shower. Yeah. Okay. Both of them. Uh, ages. Yeah. yeah. The faffers of the squad being outed. Okay, fittest. Oh, uh, Han. Toman, Han, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Get yourself up there, girl. You're definitely up there. Okay, messiest. I reckon Joe. Yeah, I I shared with her. She wasn't as bad. I think she's got a bad rep. I think she can be tidy when she wants to. Um, I'm still going with Joe. Sorry, Joe. Yeah, I mean I can't really think of it. Sarah's anything. missed the memo of the quick fire though. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> sorry, let's go with Joe. She'll let you know in a while. Thunder. We'll, we'll be yeah. back for episode two of Cup and Natta. Lindsay <laughs> will give you a list of her her answers. <laughs> we'll run with it. Okay, Joker. Uh, Towner maybe yeah Towner's a bit of a joker yeah. I would go with um, just the whole Robbo Lily combo yeah it, you know show. and Joe's in there as well like they yeah, yeah probably there's a bit more of like a, a partnership there isn't yeah. there yeah okay, yeah strong okay the future coach Tess that's a good one yeah, no. I was though no, no, Unzi knows I always think Unzi, yeah. everything about hockey. So uh she'd be up there with that. But Tess... Oh, and also Jizz. Oh yeah. I'm gonna go Jizz actually. Okay. okay. I'm gonna go Unzi with Tess as assistant coach. Mm. That's, 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 that's a that's a double act right there. I think that that's I, I would back us with either of those as coaches, to be fair. Strong, mm -hmm. strong uh, choices. Okay, final one. You've got to do this separately. Three people you would want on a desert island. Okay. Oh, I've always wanted to do Desert Island Discs, by the way. Yeah, she really, that is her one programme that she'd like to go on. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, obviously you, because cup of teas, hilarity, and nice. Okay. I've just got here. Um, got to be Tenant, because she's just hilarious, isn't she? Okay. Just keeps everyone smiling. Um, and... Oh, and Leah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know? <laughs> 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 oh yeah, we got my her. <laughs> that's a nice, that's oh, a nice four people to be on an island with, isn't it? There you go. Four. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Four. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> to be fair, Jonesy, you've just listed the three Mercian heroes, so that you've got oh. you choose well there. I love that. There we go. Okay, Leah. I would. I would be very similar. I would. I would Definitely go with you, Em, 100%. You don't have to pay me. I'm, I'm, I'm running this episode, whether you like it or not. You don't have to take me to your island. It's fine. You said we have to say it. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> definitely you, Em, for lots of reasons. Uh, some that Sarah said. Um, and I would also say Tennant because she's actually ridiculous. Also, she recently helped us move house. And she's so strong. Strongest person. So that's an important thing for moving logs and stuff. Um, <laughs> and I'm good at like fires and that kind of yeah. thing. And that's not really. And I'm really expertise. sorry to say this because I would definitely take oh, you, you definitely. But if I could also have another one, I would take Tess because I reckon Tess would like. She's fight a the survivor, bears. isn't she? Fight would the fight bears. the bears. That's a good one. Definitely. She is a survivor. Yeah. So I think. She's the, so you pick someone that 
M who's going to like do the the good stuff, tenant that's going to do the lifting, yeah, and, and Tess who's going to protect the, fight the actually, bears. She actually thought about the island situation. Yeah. I just thought about having good chat. Yeah, guys, I must admit, I don't think I'd be too much help to you both. Like, I must admit, I'd probably, I would, I'd probably sunbathe the whole time. I wouldn't help with the fires. Or the, can, the three of us can have a chat. Mm -hmm. Why tenants getting the logs, and Tess is fighting off the bears. Oh, yes. I think it works absolutely fine. We can do part two and three from the island. Okay. So with my wooden spoons. Oh, they've come, up, they've come <laughs> out again. Yeah, I'm bringing up training. <laughs> whenever this week um okay guys fantastic i mean the 30 minutes is well and truly up my mug of tea is empty i'm sure you you guys have got the same jurassic park and the cat lady um <laughs> lady mugs. but all i have left to say is thank you so so much for joining me i really really appreciate it you've loved it em. yeah thanks, thanks for, for having, having us, us. Uh, and and if anyone would like to watch any of the pro league games over the next few a uh, few weeks then obviously you can watch those on bt sport uh for anyone also wanting to catch up via the gb hockey website you can follow it through match center or on the social media channels at gb hockey uh, my next guest will be revealed on wednesday at 6 p.m so keep your eyes peeled for that but in the meantime keep that kettle boiled keep natter and using hashtag cuppa and natter and i see you again same time same place on Thursday. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>